as we learn about hypothesis testing, I want to warn you about a misunderstanding that is dreadfully easy to tumble into. I want to be sure that you do not make this common mistake. Very simply, here is what you need to know. There is nothing magical about P equals 0.05. I have known even PhD level researchers who labor under this misapprehension, and I want to disabuse you of it before we go any further into learning about null hypothesis statistical testing. As we work through our five steps of hypothesis testing, we set an alpha level at step three. And I have told you to use a two-tailed test with an alpha of 0.05 unless you are instructed otherwise. If we calculate a T value that exceeds our P equals 0.05 critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis. But you would be wise to ask, why do we use 0.05 as our significance value? Let's start by thinking about what 0.05 really means. We sometimes talk about tests being significant, but what we really mean is that the measurements are statistically significantly different. But, you know, there are different kinds of different. And if you think about it, everything is different. Even things that we think are the same are different. Two seemingly duplicate light bulbs are different. Identical twins are different. Two spark plugs are actually different. Two cars that roll off the assembly line right after each other are still different. And the means of two samples drawn from the same population, like identical twins, are different. Go out to enough decimal places and everything is different. On the other hand, many of these differences are too small to matter in the real world. So knowing that two samples of the same size drawn from the same population are going to be different, we want to know, are they really different? Are the differences greater than what would be expected by chance or measurement error? Are they statistically significantly different. So how different do the means need to be for us to conclude that they were statistically significantly different? Ah, that is the question. As a field, we have settled on a significance level of 0.05, or 5%, or 1 in 20, or 19 to 1 odds. Alpha equals 0.05 means that only 5 times out of 100 would we find this outcome if the null hypothesis was true? Remember, we start with an assumption, the null hypothesis, that the differences between two means is zero. But if we do a t-test, and the results that we observe were so unlikely that only one time out of 20 would we find these differences by chance, then we say that the differences are statistically significantly different. The probability of getting a difference as extreme or more extreme than the difference that we observed is 5%. So here are some things that you need to understand about the meaning of significance. Number one, significance is dichotomous. Your alpha level is a fence that you set before you begin an experiment. When you say to yourself, if I find differences that cross this threshold, then I am going to believe that those differences were not due to chance. The fence is your alpha level. Inside the fence is non-significance. Only differences that cross that fence are significant. So if you are in a field inside of a fence with a bull, the only safe place to be is outside of the fence. It doesn't matter how close to the fence you are, if you are still inside the fence with the bull, you are still in danger. Only when you get over the fence, outside of the fence, are you safe. Outside of the fence is statistical significance. If your P equals 0.06, you are still 
inside the fence and still non-significant. Only when P is less than 0.05 is the test significant. Significance is dichotomous, all or nothing. Number two, there is no such thing as more significant. There is no qualifier for significance, just like you can't be mostly pregnant or partly dead. Differences are either significant or they are not. So imagine that you are comparing two tests. The first test is significant at a Z of 2.01, P less than 0.05, two-tailed test. The second is significant at Z of 8.37, P less than 0.0001, two-tailed test. Is the second test more significant than the first? No. It is only a less likely result. There is no such thing as more significant, or almost significant, or marginally significant. Number three, statistical significance is not comparable. Imagine that you are comparing two treatments to a control group. The first treatment did not produce a statistically significant difference, P equals 0.08. The second treatment did produce a statistically significant difference, P equals 0.02. Should you conclude that the second treatment was more effective than the first treatment because it was significant and the first one was not? No. The difference between significant and non-significant is not itself statistically significant. We should also avoid something called p-hacking or data mining, where a researcher runs a huge number of statistical tests and then looks for the ones that came out significant. Only those with p less than 0.05 get reported, even though the statistically significant results might not be statistically significantly better than their non-significant brethren. Number four, there is no such thing as almost significant. Think of null hypothesis statistical testing like a horse race. You pay your money and you place your bets. And you bet on P equals 0.05. Then you run your experiment and only probabilities smaller than 0.05 are significant. That is how the game is played. If your P equals 0.06, the difference is non-significant not marginally significant. But don't be too disappointed if you think that P equals 0.06 is pretty close to significant. In fact, here are some descriptions of findings from actual peer-reviewed journals. Barely missed the common acceptable significance level. At the cusp of significance. Approaching significance. On the very fringes of significance trending towards significance. There is no such thing as marginally significant. It is like saying that your favorite team lost by one point, so they almost won. They were marginally winners. Or you finished fourth place, so you were almost an Olympic medalist. Almost means that it didn't happen. Almost significant means that it was not significant. There is no almost. Remember, you are not required to use 0.05. There are no statistics cops hiding behind a probability speed limit sign saying do not exceed 0.05. Most researchers use 0.05, but you could set an alpha level to some other level if you had a small sample size and wanted to use P equals 0.10. Make a case for that in your methods section you should probably tie it to a power analysis. You can still get published. These were all published studies, but set your critical value a priori before you run the experiment for statistical or theoretical reasons, and then stick with it. Don't be the researcher standing at the finish line with a losing racing form saying forlornly, my horse almost won. He was approaching a win. Well, at this point, maybe you're beginning to feel a little queasy about this 
rigid approach to statistical testing. I mean, if the t-test is p equals 0.06 and the direction of change was the direction you predicted, and if you'd only added a few more subjects, then the test would have been p less than 0.05. Doesn't that mean something? Well, if you're thinking like this, good for you. That is exactly what you should be considering. And here is why. The null hypothesis is always a lie. The null hypothesis is our starting assumption. The null hypothesis says that group means are the same and the difference between them is zero, or the correlation in the population is zero, or something like that. But that is never true. We already know that everything is different. We know that the null hypothesis is wrong from the outset. Pick any two samples, measure them finely enough, go out to enough decimal places, and those two means will differ. When we do null hypothesis statistical testing, we are essentially saying, I'm going to pretend that something is true, even though I know that it's not, and then ask, how likely is it that I would find this difference if this assumption that I know is false was actually true? P equals 0.05 is arbitrary. Have you ever wondered just where we got this P equals 0.05 standard in the first place? It was suggested by Ronald Fisher, who wrote, It is usual and convenient for experimenters to take 5% as a standard level of significance. So when we are doing statistics, we need some agreed-upon standards for comparison. The alpha of 0.05 is a convenient standard, but even Fisher wasn't adamant about it. The value for which p equals 0.05 or 1 in 20 is 1.96, or nearly 2. It is convenient to take this point as a limit in judging whether a deviation is to be considered significant or not. Deviations exceeding twice the standard deviation are thus formally regarded as significant. Non-significant results can be very important. When differences are not statistically significant, it doesn't necessarily mean that the treatment didn't work, only that we cannot rule out chance as an explanation with 95% confidence. Statistically non-significant results can still be very important in the real world, especially if they were gained using a small sample size. This happens a lot in medical research, where you have a very limited number of patients or a rare disease. If most of the patients that you are treating with an experimental drug are improving, and no one is getting worse or has failed to respond, but the t-test was not statistically significant, so what? The drug is working. P less than 0.05 doesn't matter. Reality is telling you this drug works. Leave the statistics. Take the cannoli. Avoid what John Tukey called statistical sanctification. That is, using statistics to prove something that can already be seen with the naked eye. This is a poster called The Use of an Absorbent Soft Silicone Self-Adhesive Bordered Foam Dressing to Decrease the Incidence of Sacral HAPU in Hip Fracture Patients. It just means that applying a special pad to patients' backsides eliminated bed sores. Now, I love this poster because there are no statistics, and they don't need any. Everything you need to know is right here. Before the study, 6 of 130 patients developed sacral HAPU. During the study, in which all patients received the special sacral padding, how many developed bed sores? None. Zero. And three months after using the same protocol, still zero. You don't need statistics. You can see that this is working. We used to have a problem with bed sores, then we used this dressing, and now we don't. Statistically significant results can be unimportant. Statistical significance is not the same as practical significance. Significance does not tell you whether a difference was large 
or small, important or meaningful. A difference can be statistically significant and yet practically trivial. So a gas station across town is selling gas for two cents a gallon less. That is a real difference. It is not due to chance. But is it enough to get you to drive all the way across town to fill up? Of course not. But if the gas was 50 cents per gallon less, that might get you motivated. Both of the differences are real. But only one is big enough to matter in the real world. When we consider differences, we should also consider effect size, practical significance. And so, love your P equals 0 0.06. Maybe that P of 0 0.06 really does have something useful to tell us. Maybe the direction of change also counts for something. And we should demand to know precise p-values and not be satisfied with p less than 0.05. We want to see confidence intervals and the effect size as well, if we are to be persuaded. Pay attention to the real-world implications of research and do not be dogmatic about p equals 0.05. Or, as Rosnow and Rosenthal said it, Surely God loves the 0.06 nearly as much as the 0 0.05. Arguing for viewing the p-value as a continuous measure of the strength of evidence for or against the null hypothesis. And you know who would agree with them? Ronald Fisher, the guy who gave us that 0 0.05 standard. Fisher thought that the p-value could be interpreted as a continuous measure of evidence against the null hypothesis. He never presented 5% as some magical fixed value at which the results suddenly become significant. A P of 0 0.049 and 0 0.051 constitute an identical amount of evidence against the null hypothesis. So remember, statistics don't prove anything. Statistics provide evidence. We are scientists, and science is not a religion. We have no need for dogmatism. We are seeking clarity and understanding of the world around us. And null hypothesis significance testing is just one of several tools that can help us to figure out how our world works. <laughs> <laughs>